Thinking about moving to Southern Utah, but you're just not quite sure if you'll love it here? Well, worry no more. In this video, we're gonna talk about some of the pros and cons about living in St. George, Utah from somebody that actually does it right after this intro. Hello folks, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Here we talk about buying, selling, and investing in real estate in Southern Utah, as well as all things like living, working, and playing in St. George, Utah. So if you're new around here, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell right next to it so you don't miss any of the valuable videos that we post on a weekly basis. About a year ago, uh, a little over a year and a half ago actually, uh, to be exact, I think it was January of 2020, we posted a video that received tremendous response from our audience. In that video, we covered five pros or five things that we love about living in Southern Utah and five things that we don't necessarily enjoy or hate about living in Southern Utah. And that video, and especially the comment section, received tremendous response from our viewership. And we certainly appreciate your comments. And also, if you're watching this video and you happen to live in Southern Utah, please do feel free to contribute in the comments below to things that you absolutely love about living here or maybe things that you hate that making you feel like you would like to maybe live this area. I'll, I'll link the video up here in the cards in the comments below. So that original video generated a huge response and some of the comments we find very relevant. So if you're thinking about relocating to this area, well, first of all, the first thing that you should do is you should call us and we can help you with making that decision. and answer some of the questions outside of the scope of this video, but also make sure to watch that original video because it has some great information that we may probably not cover in this video, but we'll also try to compare and contrast some of the things. But what were some of the topics that we covered in the original video? Our five pros that we had covered in the original video was the pros of living in Southern Utah. We covered the weather, the cost of living in Southern Utah, where St. George is located, um, all the outdoor activities, the Southern Utah crime rate, and then cons we had listed off. Of course, it's not a beachfront in Southern Utah, no beachfront. Um, not a lot of fine dining options. Um, we had mentioned bad drivers. Which we actually got a lot of, uh... let me let me just give you guys a formal I, apology. I rewatched that and I'm like, <laughs> that was terrible. Yeah, we, we said some relatively cringy things and we did not mean to isolate anybody in a specific category of bad drivers. Let's just say this, um, some drivers just suck regardless of uh, their age, regardless of anything else. They're just bad behind the wheel. Those of you that can identify with that group, I'm sure you all know who you are. And those of you that get offended by that, we did not mean to offend any specific group of people. If you suck at driving, you know who you are. Please don't <laughs> take offense to it. <laughs> When I was really thinking about it, I'm like, I, I don't get frustrated on a daily basis, not even a weekly basis. I do so, most of the driving. I mean, I, I yeah, I'm, I'm fine with whoever's driving, but I don't get frustrated with, with drivers here, even on a weekly basis. So that's not even a, a con, I don't feel like. In I guess Southern since Utah. the original video was made, uh, we've, uh, the, the demographic in Southern Utah had diversified quite a bit. And I think we've gotten more good drivers and perhaps more bad drivers. So that that con, I guess, had actually somewhat diminished itself. What were some of the other cons? Um, and then we had covered, um, it's too hot in St. George in the summer, and then shopping, nowhere to shop. So hot summers still prevail. Uh, in fact, the last summer was actually one of the hotter summers that we had experienced in a while. Please excuse the weird noises that you may hear in this video. Let me, let me just show you what's going on behind the scenes as we film these videos. Are you, uh, are you done scratching, sir? Are you guys comfortable? As long as you're comfortable. The Can editorial staff of uh, this YouTube channel is right in front of you. This is Diesel and this is Meatball. Meatball is the sound engineer. He often makes gremlin noises. And this is the guy in front of the scratching and itching and other sound effects. Anyway, back to our scheduled programming. And the last thing we covered in our last video was there's nowhere to shop in St. George. 
Yeah, retail shopping. Well, and we've seen a little bit of the dynamic change uh, with the events of 2020 pandemic. Um, more and more consumers are shopping online. So if, if you're used to that kind of thing, you're probably not going to be affected by it because it is a small town mall that I sometimes question how it stays in business. There are a couple of boutique style shops and it's not if you're desperately trying to purchase an outfit to go to a wedding or uh, a special white tie event or whatever. It I mean, may our be. mall has like JC Penney Dillard's and it's probably got maybe 30 or more shops, maybe 40 shops. It's, it's a small mall. They are extending onto it. Um, I mean, we've got your home goods, TJ Maxx, um, endless amount of boutiques, um, a bunch of smaller, like, furniture stores but if you want to get a true real shopping experience then vegas is 90 minutes away you could either resort to shopping online or dressing from costco like myself <laughs> <laughs> so anyway let's jump into some of the 2021 edition of pros and cons that we were able to come up with and as we mentioned earlier if you're living in this area and you have to contribute to the pros and cons list. We feel that these types of videos get received really well by our audience and we're continuing to expand the list of pros and cons. So if you have any suggestions, drop them in the comments below. So what are some of the pros that are either still the same or some of the pros that we've observed in 2021? So let's start with weather. According to best places, St. George has a climate comfort index of 7.5 overall with 10 being the best for weather let's see april october and may are the most pleasant months in st george and july and august are the least comfortable months wouldn't you agree yeah i would definitely agree with that um, we also got some weather highlights so summer highs in july is around 101 degrees i mean this seems a, t a little off i mean it can get up to like 110 and this summer, this last summer of 2021 was a little bit off the charts. We've uh, experienced hot weather longer than normal before, but I feel like that was kind of a, a national unusual. trend. Like we've, yeah. we've seen it, you know, California, Washington, Pacific Northwest, parts of the country that normally don't get that hot have also gotten hotter than usual. And of course, we've observed that here in the desert. And then winter low, January low is, is around 29 Rain averages 10 inches of rain a year, and snow averages about two inches of snow each year. And as, as somebody that moved from cold climate, uh, I could tell you that the first two things, if you're moving here from the Midwest or if you're moving here from the Pacific North, any colder parts of the country, you will appreciate this. If you're thinking about packing your snowblower or snow shovel in a U-Haul, don't do it. Be a good neighbor and give it to somebody that may still need it. Your, your next door neighbor, put on a yard sale, put on Facebook for free because you're not going to need it here. Yeah, that's, a, that's a, definitely a plus. Um, the annual, let's see, for best places, we also got the air quality index for St. George area is 68 with 100 being the best and the US average is 58. And this, this stat is a little bit confusing because if you're looking at the air quality index, typically the lower number is better, but this is the opposite. So here yeah. 100 being the best, St. George is 68. US um, average is 58. US average is 58. So we're better by 10 points, yeah. 10 basis points versus the US average. But we're used to looking at our iPhone on the weather app. Yeah, and usually and the lower number is better, but this is, this is the opposite. Okay, so our next, um, Pro is obviously the location. So St. George is located in the southwest corner of Utah. And then I just I put a, a few places of how far away how far away we are from um, surrounding areas. So we're 90 minutes um, from Las Vegas. We're under six hours to LA, four hours to Salt Lake City, five and a half hours to Lake Powell, and two and a half hours to Grand Canyon National Park and an hour and a half to Brian Head Resort. So, I mean, you're never too far from a day's trip to go to the beach if you want, or go to the snow. We've actually done it one time, and I've been meaning to edit that video and put it together, but in one day, living in Southern Utah, in the same day, 
in the middle of winter, you could go to the lake and you could travel to like Midway, Utah to go snowmobiling. So you could go from snowmobiling and skiing to hiking, biking, and off-roading while just wearing a t-shirt. Uh, the only thing that we're missing, as we mentioned in the previous con, is there are no beachfront properties. However, Sand Hollow is absolutely incredible. If you like going to the beach and you like enjoying warm water and nice sandy beach, that's, mm -hmm. that's a great replacement. And otherwise, if you really want to experience the beach, you could drive to California. You're, what, six hours away? Yeah. With the new challenges as a country, we're, we're facing some new opportunities and a lot of companies in early 2020 switched to telecommuting, which opened up a great opportunity for a lot of our clients that are moving here and are able to preserve their employment with the companies that they've worked for for a long time. St. George has a regional airport with a number of local destinations um, and you're about an hour and a half from Las Vegas that has direct flights to anywhere in the world. So you're able to get to an airport. If you're here in St. George, nothing is more than 10 minutes apart. Mm -hmm. So pretty much anywhere in Washington County, you're no more than 10 to 15 minutes away from an airport. Even though we've complained about some bad drivers, the traffic is not really something that you would experience here in a sense of that word that you would understand it if you're living in LA and Chicago, for instance, you have to account for an hour long commute to get to an airport. Pretty much doesn't matter where you live in a city, it's gonna take an hour to get to the airport because as you get close to an airport, the traffic backs up. Being a small regional airport, you're able to get there in 10 to 15 minutes. Yeah. So and it's free, really hard to miss your flight. Our freeway has never been at a standstill due to traffic, so. You may experience some traffic on some of the local roads uh, because the infrastructure is catching up to the growth in population. So if you're taking River Road in the middle of the day, you may run into a little bit of a bumper to bumper in between the lights. But once you clear the main arteries, and also there are great, um, alternatives to, like for instance, we avoid River Road in the middle of the day. You could take I-15 or you could take the Southern Parkway to get to most destinations that you would be able to get to on kind of the main artery, like River Road uh, runs from north to south across uh, St. George and it gets you to most residential neighborhoods, but there are other ways to get there if you're in a hurry. Yeah, back roads to everywhere, so. Huh. Um, our next topic is all the different events that Southern Utah has to offer. So Which I, also contribute to traffic. Yes. <laughs> so I listed a bunch, so I'm just going to read them off. Um, there's all kinds of calendars that you can find online, um, event calendars for Southern Utah, St. George, Hurricane Santa Clara, all the different surrounding communities. Um, so just to list off a few, there is St. George Heritage Days. We have the Parade of Homes, year-long biking events, including the Red Bull Rampage, year-long water events at the lakes, St. George Art Festival, adult and children triathlons, marathons, half marathons, endless hiking, Utah Youth Track and Field meet competitions, or the championships, youth summer games, skateboarding competitions, farmers markets every single weekend, monthly St. George Festival featuring city social gatherings. So they do the, the live concerts, movie in the park, um, tons of food trucks, display booths, and, and more. Um, we have the Dixie, the Dixie Roundup Rodeo, the Ironman World Championship, the Huntsman Senior Games, UT, UTV Takeover, Santa Clara Swiss Days, Hurricane Peach Days, and of course, all the golf that your heart desires. About 255 sunny days without any precipitation make golfing and all the other outdoor adventures just absolutely awesome here. You could pretty much count on good weather mm -hmm. for any kind of outdoor activities. And I don't know if you mentioned, there's also um, a new um, BMX bike park uh, called Snake Hollow out mm -hmm. in Santa Clara mm -hmm. uh, that was added oh, to that yeah. list. So there's tons of youth and adult BMX 
bike events that take place. We have a couple of friends that participate in those and they're just hooked. Like that's something that they do as a whole family. Uh, the husband and the kids both race in these events. And I guess they're on a national level. Like there's racers from all over the place that come there to race in those BMX competitions. Well, and Southern Utah is like the biking Mecca. There's trails that cover this entire city. Anywhere you go alongside a road, there's, there's biking trails all over. Yeah, so. and they're different in complexity. So there's great road biking uh, near Snow Canyon in Santa Clara, and there's mountain bike trails that are literally everywhere. And the riding conditions are perfect. So for instance, in the middle of summer, like as we were talking about uh, the weather earlier, in the middle of summer, if you wake up early enough, you can catch that perfect 60 to 70 degree weather and go out on a bike ride without sweating as long as you're back by 11 a.m., 10 a.m., 11 a.m., depending on the season. And in a dead of winter, if you wait until the sun comes up over the clouds or until the sun comes up, uh, you're typically experiencing 55, 60 degree weather. So you can literally ride year round. And I always just try to think as a perspective, moving somewhere that I've never been, or as far as like meeting people and just getting out in the community, there are so many different events to just get out and socialize and meet people. Um, I mean, there's all these different calendars that you could just go and check things out. So that's... Well, this leads us into our next major pro. And, and, and a big thing that there's a video that I posted, I'll link in the comments to my personal experience moving into this area, is the sense of community and the people that are here. The people are great. So here are some stats uh, that Michonne will bring us into about Southern Utah community and what, you know, what, what are things, what are, what are people like here? So yeah, that was our next pro was um, St. George is a very family friendly community. Just to cover the population, we're at just over 92,000, about 1,200 people per square mile. Um, the median age in St. George is 33 and the U.S. median age is 37. So the number of people per household is 2.9 in St. George, and the U.S. average people per household is 2.6. 59.5% are married, 10.1% are divorced, 35.1% are married with children, and 11.1% have children but are single. So it's, a, it's actually interesting to see these stats, and keep in mind, those are the stats for the city of St. George. I would say population of Washington County. And if you're not from around this area, it's kind of hard to differentiate, okay, like city of St. George, where is that in relation to Washington County? So most communities like St. George, Washington, Hurricane, Ivan, Santa Clara, all of these communities, best I could explain it is it's comparable to like St. George being a bigger city and these little suburbs that are attached to it you're no more than 10 to 15 minutes away, but if you compose the total population of Washington County, I think we're talking closer to like 150,000 people plus. I'm curious, I'm just gonna look it up. What is the population of Washington County? Let's see. So as of 2019, and keep in mind, according to census, in 2020, our population here spiked by nearly 13%. And as of 2019, total population of Washington County is 177,556 people. So I'm guessing by now we're probably closer to 200,000 in Washington County. So I stand corrected. Uh, what, what I'm trying to say is that greater numbers in population bring greater diversity, greater diversity in, in familial structure, uh, diversity across the board, which we think is a great thing. Mm -hmm. So if you're moving here from a bigger city, don't, and we find these rumors all over the internet with the lack of diversity comes stereotypes and come uh, closed mindedness. And that, that's also a huge stereotype about Utah in general and Southern Utah. We don't find for that to be true. Um, if, if you come here with the right intentions and you're a friendly person, you're gonna spend no time making friends. Mm -hmm. People generally are very friendly and you could find somebody with similar interests because there are so many things to do. Yeah. So what's our, uh, what's our next pro? Our next pro is property taxes. So property taxes in Washington County, and this is, it's similar to other places. It's, 
is broken down by county. In Washington County, typical tax assessment is 0.008%, so like less than 1% uh, of the assessed value. And the value is assessed by the county assessor. So Utah is a non-disclosed state. So typically a county assessor would assess the value of your property based on comparables that they have. So you don't have to present them with a copy of your purchase contract or even disclose on what you purchased the property for. And if it's your secondary residence, that ends there. Just a little less than 1% is what you could account for in taxes. If it's your primary residence, you also take that assessed value and you depreciate it by 45%. So you get taxed on the 55% of the total assessed value times 0.08. So just to kind of put things in perspective, if you're moving here from Illinois, Chicago in particular, you could expect for your property tax bill to be slashed by about two thirds. So you'd be paying about a third of your property taxes. I believe that's also true for most places in California and Washington. May kind of vary, but you get the idea. It is relatively inexpensive to maintain ownership of your real estate from a tax perspective right here in Washington County. Awesome. Um, we'll move on to our cons. So we, over, we already covered the lack of shopping. And so now one of the new cons is the cost of living. We do property management and that gives us kind of a broad spectrum of people submitting their pay stubs. Like what, what if you happen to be a renter in this area? How, how challenging is it to find a rental? So cost of living is mainly composed of, you know, most of the country really, the largest living expense is the cost of ownership and the cost of renting. Mm -hmm. Cost of rent, you could pretty much account for uh, most entry-level rentals come in at around fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars a month, mm -hmm. and the median sale price on um, a property in Washington County is at what is it four hundred four hundred and fifty-seven thousand at the time of recording this video. Mm -hmm. So you do the math. Uh, cost of living can be substantial in Washington County, and according to best places. Um, our index, so the best places does this thing with basis points and Southern Utah in general, when you combine the cost of healthcare, cost of um, living, like housing, and the cost of groceries, Southern Utah, or St. George in particular, comes in at about 103%, where average, like US average, is at 100%. So we're slightly more expensive than the US average. And the two major drivers for that metric are compared to the rest of the US, cost of healthcare in Southern Utah is at 108% compared to 100 on national average. And cost of housing is at 131% compared to 100% um, in relation to the national average. But mm -hmm. here's a good way to look at it. If you're moving here from someplace that is and again, this is subjective, so don't crucify me in the comments, but let's just say you're moving here from some place that is less desirable, subjectively, uh, from crime, from weather, from other standpoints. Cleanliness. Cleanliness. Uh, typically, and I'm not gonna identify any part of the country because that could come across offensive, so to maintain complete neutrality, you know, if, if this is an upgrade, if this is a more desirable place, your expense of living will go up. Real estate is more expensive, healthcare is more expensive, and I believe that groceries are kind of right in line, so like cost of food is about the same. So it takes more money to live in a more desirable place. However, if you're moving here from uh, a place that's sought after, let's say a major city, um, places that are on the ocean front, you know, places that have some attractions, places where people want to be. We typically find that Southern Utah is actually more affordable than those places. So the numbers presented for this segment are subjective to national average, but then when you put things in perspective, if you compare Southern Utah to the places where you actually want to be, it is still a bargain. Yeah, I agree. Well, and then that just takes us right into our next con is uh, challenging employment. We we get that from a lot of our clients that call um, that 
aren't able to work remotely with their current job and looking for new employment, it's, it's pretty challenging. So finding employment is challenging and uh, from a national perspective, national unemployment rate at the time of recording of this video, and these numbers could be slightly skewed because it's 2021 and the stats tend to change as they, as they update. So for the sake of this video, according to what we're finding from best places, the national unemployment rate is at 6% in comparison to uh, the unemployment rate in Southern Utah at 2.9%. Of St. George resident is at 48,000 per year with the US average at 53,000 per year. If I find for these stats to be 100% true because, for instance, how do you account for somebody that just moved to Southern Utah but maintain their employment with a company in New York, Chicago, LA, or maybe yeah, there's no way a to global track that. company. Yeah. How do you track that? Is there income reporting going back to New York, LA, yeah. Chicago, yeah. or some global company? If you know the answer to that question, drop in the comments <laughs> below because as, as we were putting these numbers together, but you know, the, the relativity of, of that section is still relevant because with our property management business, we get to review, um, you know, a lot of a lot of income statements. And the most common issue that we run into is typically, and and this is this is a challenge that you may experience if you're moving here and you're planning on renting. The number one requirement that most property management companies are looking for is for rent to not exceed thirty percent of your income. So if you're applying for jobs and you're thinking about moving here and first renting, keep this in mind. Factor in the cost of rental housing times that by three unless you're making that on monthly basis and for example sake let's say that you know entry level rental is fifteen hundred dollars a month unless you're making forty five hundred dollars a month you are probably going to find it challenging to find a rental because you're going to run into uh, not being able to qualify based on income so if you have a spouse or a roommate, you know, two or three incomes usually make crossing that gap a lot easier. But if you're counting on a single income, keep that formula in mind. If you're looking for rentals, you have to make 3x the rent mm -hmm. in monthly income. And also finding a pet friendly yes. rental. And this is actually something that we've seen. It's like our number one complaint. Well, just the complaint ah. in general in Southern Utah is trying to find a pet friendly rental. So amongst some of the cons in our previous video, we've had some people that shared those stories. For one reason or another, Southern Utah landlords tend to be a little bit more picky than other parts of the country. So they want, you know, a solid applicant that doesn't have any pets. We have two bulldogs, we can totally relate. It breaks our heart that that part is one of the challenges as well. Yeah. And our last con is um, St. George nightlife. The median household income, I don't know. Which is dramatically changing compared to when we shot this video, what, a year and a half ago? Yeah. So what would you say has changed? It could be a pro or a con for some people, honestly. In, in the original video, we said that if you're looking for any kind of meaningful, is that the term you use with nightlife? Is it ever meaningful? I mean, just if you're just if you're an idol and you just need more excitement in your life, I mean, yeah, you know, to go out uh, and have a night out in town and experience some fine dining, maybe share a few cocktails or go to a show, uh, go to a proper nightclub that, you know, attracts hundreds, thousands of people. I mean, mo most restaurants in a community are going to close on even on weekdays, weeknights or weekends. They're gonna close around like 10 p.m. 10 p.m. So like nine or 10 p.m. And then there's, I think there's like three or four bars in town and they're open till like 1 a.m. I think actually the new uh, new firehouse uh, brewery is open, I wanna say till like, yeah, 1 a.m. Yeah, so so there's not much to offer after 1 a.m. If, if you're looking for more nightlife beyond that, but 
um, nevertheless, Las Vegas is 90 minutes, so. And there's been a couple more uh, establishments that offer drinks and food uh, later in the evening and that have full bars. So um, historically, with Southern Utah being predominantly uh, Mormon in its religious population, liquor laws in Utah are a little bit different. And this is something that may be new to you if you're new to Utah in general. So a lot of restaurants that don't have a liquor only license will require for you to purchase at least an appetizer with any kind of purchase of alcoholic beverage. So if you walk into Applebee's and you say, hey, I want two shots and a beer, you will not be served unless you, well, and first of all, you wouldn't be able to order that because it would have to be one, <laughs> one drink at a time. And there is also a food requirement with your beverage. If you walk into an actual bar bar, then you can order whatever. But with most restaurants, there is a requirement for food order with a drink. Actually, in, in nightlife's not even, I mean, you can go to Mesquite, Nevada, which is less than 30 minutes away. They have um, a bunch of casinos. They have, um, They've got like comedy events and dancing and so I mean there's more there's more nightlife there and that's going all night so yeah there's definitely some great options with just a short drive to Mesquite or if you want the finest dining and the finest nightlife and entertainment Las Vegas is less than an hour and a half drive you could go out there enjoy it and come back to clean quiet St. George not have to worry about all of the cons that the nightlife typically brings, and I don't want to sound like somebody that's anti-nightlife, but typically places that have more bars statistically produce more DUIs, statistically produce more property damage and more drunk drivers. Mm -hmm. That's true. So you get to have all the pros without the cons. And there you have it. That is, that is our list of pros and cons. And if you guys can think of any more to add, please drop them in the comments below. If you found this video useful, if you're thinking about moving to the area, maybe you have a friend that's moving into the area, please share this video so that they can discover it. And if you enjoyed this content, please give it a thumbs up so that YouTube algorithm can suggest this video to more people that you may not know that are thinking about moving into this great area that may also benefit from this video. And in addition to that, Michonne and I are both realtors and we are happy to serve all of your real estate needs in Washington or Iron County, which is basically a large portion of the state. We also have referral partners that support surrounding areas. So if you're thinking about moving, period, anywhere in the U.S., predominantly southern Utah, Nevada, Arizona, anywhere in our neck of the woods, please do reach out to us. We would absolutely love to help you with any advice that we could share or would love to see you as one of our clients. We would absolutely love that. Even if you are just trying to decide if this is a right fit for you, please call us, text us, email us. We can set you up on some searches so you can get a good idea of our market. Come visit us. We can go explore some homes so you can truly get an idea if this is somewhere where you, you and your family would like to be. Thank you all so much for tuning in. We appreciate all of your love and support, and we will see you in the next one. Bye.